Sounds interesting, but does it have any practical application? Understanding genetic diseases, for example, understanding the nature of cancer, once we begin to approach uh, the problem of information storage in the genome from the standpoint of, well, maybe this is a well-designed system, and maybe like any other well-designed system, when something goes wrong, you know, we, we can pinpoint exactly what it is. Neurosurgeon Michael Egnor is already taking a design approach to his study of the human brain. The brain has the misfortune of being enclosed in a, in a rigid box, and it's perfused by a pump that is a sledgehammer. This pump pounds the brain. So how do the brain capillaries take this pounding? And I read a lot in physiology texts, a lot of in biology and neurosurgery, and there was no good answer. So I began looking in engineering texts. And uh, I found that there were devices uh, that uh, were called uh, dynamic absorbers. And they were used to keep things from vibrating too much. And I realized that the same design principles that had been used in dynamic absorbers were showing up inside the head. If we're right about this, um, the only reason we figured it out was by looking at the science of design, which is engineering. Jonathan Wells is also making progress by applying intelligent design theory to his research on cancer. Every animal cell contains little, tiny organelles called centrioles. When you look at these under the electron microscope, each of these centrioles looks very much like a tiny turbine. It has nine blades slanted around the outside, and approaching them as though, as though they actually were tiny turbines, I formulated a hypothesis with the help of a, a turbine expert from a major aircraft company that would explain what these are doing in the animal cell. These turbines would shut down at a certain point during cell division. If they malfunction and don't shut down, they could produce enough uh, force on chromosomes to break them apart. And this chromosome breakage, this chromosomal instability it's called, we now know is the first step in cancer. If it turns out to be true, this will be an example of how design can lead to medical benefits that Darwinian evolution has not given us. Intelligent design doesn't seem to be stopping these scientists, so why is there so much controversy about their work?